That's another offer of help that Boaz gave to Ruth. The, the offer of confidence. It will make the woman confident. When a woman is around you and she's in need of help, and you want to take advantage of her, she loses her dignity, she loses her confidence. And I want us to pay attention to some of these things. Another thing I think that Boaz offered, offered to Ruth was opportunities. He made Ruth get opportunities to explore the whole field. As you can see from verses 13 and 15, she told, the, she told uh, I mean, Boaz told the young people that you should leave produce for the woman to gather. Allow her, even if she wants to gather around the, among the sheep, the already gathered bundles, allow her to take. Let her take whatever she needs. Nobody should restrict or resist her. That was a huge opportunity that Boaz offered Ruth. Now, listen to me carefully, beloved. I hear a young lady say, without words. I hear a young lady speak, but she is not speaking with words. And this is what she says. I need help. But please don't harm me. Yes, I need help, but not help. Men at work, don't touch the girls. Men at work, please leave the ladies alone. Yes, I mean it. You see, here in the story, Boaz acknowledges that he can take advantage of Ruth. He has the right to take advantage of Ruth. But he realizes that or he he records that for him, it is not the right thing to do. That is why he, he told Ruth that, my daughter, don't worry. Don't get trouble. Everything will be sorted out. There's somebody who qualifies the more to take care or to become your husband. In the next morning, I'm going to meet him and put the matter before him. If he is willing to take up his responsibilities or obligations over you and your mother-in-law, so be it. That will be good. That was the worst. These were the words of Boaz. He said, that will be good. Meaning that Boaz was not ready to take advantage of Ruth, even though he can or he could. He said, I can do this, but I, am, I do not qualify for now, because there's someone who qualifies more than I do. I cannot say because I have been providing food for you. Therefore, I'm taking advantage. So he said that, let us go and see the one who paid the law, who paid the arrangement, cultural arrangements, qualifies to take up the responsibility of a husband. But if he does not want it, then I can take. This is a great lesson. Boaz was looking at what is the right thing to do. And my exhortation to all of us who are in positions of authority, who are influential, who are worthy, who are well to do, is that we should not take advantage of people that need our help. The fact that we offer food to someone does not mean that we should take advantage of the person. The fact that we offer shelter or the fact that we hold a person's hand so that he could move on in life. The fact that we sign a letter for someone. The fact, the fact that we stamp a, a letter, we put our seal on a letter that could speak for somebody somewhere. What we call endorsement or recommendation does not mean that we should take advantage of the person and abuse the person. Let us learn from Ruth and Boaz's story, where Boaz said that, I can take advantage of you, but it is not the right thing to do. Boaz waited till others had met 
and had informed that man who was the closest kinsman redeemer that that was the right thing to do. He should take up his obligations by becoming the husband of Ruth so that he could take care of Ruth and Naomi, the old woman. And the law. But the man said he can't. He can't because he doesn't want to ruin his properties. He doesn't want to have his property split over his own biological children with his wife and then the children that he may he may give birth to with Ruth. So he said, I cannot. Then the elders agreed that if he could not, then Boaz could. That was the only time Boaz came in and took Ruth as a wife legally in the presence of elders. Why can't we do this? Why do we have to take advantage of young girls that come to our aid, that come to our shelter, young girls that come to seek for, 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 for help or assistance, young girls that need us to come to their aid in order to survive or in order to progress, in order to get one thing or the other in this life. Why can't we do this? There are many, many, many young people, especially the females, who need help, but they cannot come to, to us because they are afraid. At your workplace, there are ladies there that have something to say. They have great ideas to share, but they can't come to you as a boss because they are afraid that you may take advantage of them. You may request for something they cannot offer. You may ask for sex. You may ask for what does not do you. There are young people in your workplace, madam, as a manageress, as a directress, as a head. They can't come to you because they are afraid that you may take advantage of them. You may want to coddle them and force them or subdue them to fall in bed with you or compromise their integrity. Therefore, they can't come to you. Why can't we give people liberty like Boaz did? Why can't we offer dignity as Boaz did? Why can't we offer protection as Boaz did? My exhortation to all of us is that let's go all out to offer the help that people need. When people come to us for help, let's give them the help we have without harming them. So that at the end of the day, they can go to God and thank God and praise the Lord. They can meet their families, meet their friends and say, thank God. I was helped without harm. I was helped unharmed. That is my message for you today. That at the school, as a lecturer, as a professor, do not take advantage of students in order to abuse them because you can offer marks or offer some help uh, give them the opportunity to, to get networked here and there or job opportunities. As a director, as a manager, as a head, as a leader, as a pastor, do not take advantage of people that come to you for help. But let us give them help without harming them, help without hurting them. By learning from Boaz, according to Ruth, chapter 2, chapter 3, and of course, chapter 4. Let us create an environment where people can have liberty, they can have confidence to do what the Lord has called them to do. Let the young people that are working with, uh, with us, working with us, have confidence to come out. We should not kill their confidence. By putting in them fear of being harassed or being molested, even at the workplace or in school or in church. Let us learn from Boaz. And that is our obligation. Some of us are worthy. We are worthy because there will be people in need. Some of us, we are in the, in the, the, the position of authority because people will need our help. We are influential people because people will need our help. When they come for the help, 
let us willingly offer the help to them without harming them, without hurting them. I remember in the story of Abraham and Sarah, the story of Abraham and Sarah in Genesis chapter 20, verse 2 following, when Abraham and Sarah had become foreigners on a foreign land, the king of the land called Abimelech took advantage of Sarah and took her until God went and warned him in a dream and even locked up the womb of all the women in his kingdom. Look at that. In the case of uh, Joseph, when Joseph went to the house of Potiphar, because he was a slave, Potiphar's wife took advantage of Joseph and forced him to go to bed with her until Joseph fled. And that even landed Joseph in prison because the woman had to orchestrate a lie against Joseph that Joseph had raped her. These incidences are happening in homes, in schools, colleges, universities, in churches, at workplaces. We need to repent. I'm wondering how Abraham could have laid hands on Hagar if Hagar were not a slave in his house. Because Hagar was a slave in the, in the house, was a maid. According to Abraham, Sarah said, Abraham should go into her. At the end of the day, what happened? Hagar had to be sacked with her, with, with her baby. It's not fair. But I can also talk about, apart from Boaz, I can talk about Moses. When Moses offered help to Zipporah at the well, he did not take advantage of Zipporah. He offered the help to Zipporah by fetching water for her. It was Zipporah who went and told her father that there is somebody in the, in the bush, if you like. The man I saw, he did this and that and that and that for us. And then the father said, go and bring him, let him come home. And then Moses became a, a visitor, if you like, in the house of Jethro Reuel. And eventually, Jethro Reuel, the priest of Midian, gave her his daughter, Zipporah, for marriage to Moses. But Moses did not take advantage of, of Zipporah. Jacob did the same. He did not take advantage of them until he had gone home, seen the father work for seven years and seven more years before the women became his wives. When people need our help, we should not take advantage of them. Let them receive the help without hurt, the help without harm. So that, like I said, they can exclaim, Oh, at long last, I am helped unharmed. I am helped without harm. I am helped and hurt. Let this become the worst of joy coming out of our young ladies coming out of our young men, going for it. And the Lord will bless you like Boaz was blessed. Now, woman blessed Boaz. Ruth blessed Boaz. And indeed, Boaz became one of the blessed people on the land. May the Lord bless you and keep you for doing the right thing at the workplace, at the college, at the school, in the church, everywhere you find yourself as an, an influential person, a wealthy person, a well-to-do person, a person in authority. In Jesus' name. Amen.